With WKUF News, I'm David Jackson for Monday, April 18th, 2016. Governor Rick Snyder says that he will ask Congress for funding to replace an aid package recently removed from an energy bill in Washington. Ron Fonger of the Flint Journal reports that as well as Snyder asking for aid from Congress, last Thursday, U.S. Representative Dan Kildee of the Flint area called on Republican Speaker of the House Paul Ryan to pass emergency aid for Flint. Snyder said on Friday that he was disappointed to hear that Congress is not moving forward with the aid package that could have helped Flint, adding that his office will be following up with members of Congress to encourage them to move forward. Last week, Senator Mike Lee of Utah held up a long-awaited energy bill in Washington in protest to an amendment that could have helped Flint with the water crisis. Senator Lee, after successively having the amendment removed, defended his position, saying that he did not believe that the funds being appropriated were being done so properly. In a press release, Senator Lee said that outside of the amendment that Michigan Senator Debbie Stabenow and others were attempting to add to the energy bill, allegedly neither the governor nor Michigan's senators have asked Congress for aid through proper channels. The governor's remarks allegedly came after Senator Lee released that statement. Last Friday, the governor proposed a plan to the Flint Water Interagency Coordinating Committee that could provide long-term replacement of lead water pipes throughout the state. Emily Lawler on MLive.com reports that the plan includes establishing new state standards for water infrastructure that would go above and beyond the federal copper rule. In addition to creating the toughest standards in the nation, the proposal calls for every public water system to adopt a full lead service line replacement program within 10 years. Stephen Serkayan, executive director of Lansing's Board of Water and Light, has been in charge of replacing lead service lines in Lansing. Serkayan says that since 2004, Lansing has replaced nearly 14,000 lines and to date, the project has cost $42 million. Lansing's Board of Water and Light developed a method of replacing lead service lines that knocked down times from 10 hours originally to between 4 and 5 hours and lowering the cost to $3,000 per service line. Flint's Fast Start program is running behind schedule. However, Lansing's BWL is providing expertise. Ari Adler, Governor Snyder's communications director, says that it is still to be determined how communities will pay for lead service line replacements, and the timeline is still yet to be determined, adding that the health of the public is at issue and they wanted to draft the best possible proposal, not just the easiest to implement. Michigan's Department of Environmental Quality says that they want Flint residents to start flushing their homes plumbing. Gary Ridley of the Flint Journal reports that beginning May 1st, residents are being advised to run cold water at the highest flow in their bathtub and then to bypass their water filters and run cold water through their kitchen faucets for five minutes every day for two weeks, starting in May. Officials say that regular flushing of a home's plumbing is key to removing lead, as well as recoating the pipes with a protective film. The city announced last week that it would place automatic flushing devices on 15 fire hydrants throughout the city. Virginia Tech researcher Mark Edwards says that at the current rate of water usage in Flint, it could take months or even years to remove lead and iron deposits. However, moving more water through the system at higher velocity could cut the restoration time to months or even weeks. Mel Brown, a spokeswoman with the DEQ, said that the state will pick up the cost for the flushing program, noting that each water bill will receive a $10.50 credit on their bill that should cover the cost of the water used. General Motors is recalling more than a million Chevrolet Silverado and GMC Sierra pickup trucks worldwide because the seat belts may not hold the driver in a crash. The Associated Press reports that the recall covers certain Chevrolet, Silverado, and GMC Sierra trucks from the 2014 and 2015 model years. The recall stems from a steel cable that connects the belts to the truck that can wear out over time, possibly causing the belts to become loose. According to the Associated Press, GM filed the problem itself by analyzing warranty data. David Muller on MLive.com reports that to see if your vehicle is affected by the recall, go to safecar.gov and plug in your VIN number where appropriate. For more information about today's stories, visit WKUF.FM. I'm David Jackson.